All right, guys, happy Easter. Here we go. We are going to do a uh, lamb roast, and I'm going to give you guys step-by-step -step instructions on how, how I do it, how I've been taught to do it. Um, first steps first, buy yourself a very nice lamb. Uh, this lamb in particular is about 28 pounds. You don't want it any bigger. Uh, any bigger, it's going to have a gamey flavor to it. It's not going to be very good. So we got a lot of meat here. The, the hind quarters are basically where the majority of the meat comes from. The ribs are, uh, are very, very thin. There's not a lot of meat here. The shoulders got a pretty good amount of meat. And then of course you've got the loins on the back of the, uh, the spine. The rest of it pretty much is just kind of nibbles and bits. Uh, but essentially it's from here to the shoulder where you're gonna have meat the hind quarters, and then of course the loins. This is all just gonna be crispy, delicious, salty skin. You can see, uh, God bless them, they left me the kidneys, which are delicious, I love them, and the liver. So, you know, we can make goulash out of this. There's a plenty of things. Maybe we'll barbecue them tomorrow at the same time. I don't know, we'll see. Um, and, which is not usual or normal, uh, they left us the head, which I love, because you've got the tongue, there's little bits of meat here, some cheek meat and whatnot. And of course the brain, if you get inside it, you can uh, eat that as well. Some, some decent meat, not, not great, but not bad here around the neck as well. So first steps first, we're gonna salt it tonight. Today is Saturday, we're gonna cook this on Sunday. So we're gonna give it a liberal, very liberal amount of salt. This is probably not enough right here. Um, this is a kilo of salt. I'm probably gonna add a little bit more than that just to make sure that it's very good and salty because I love my lamb salty. And then tomorrow uh, we'll pull it out, we'll put it on the, the rod and, uh, and then we'll get to grilling. And I'll uh, keep you guys updated as we go. Okay guys, just to trim it up, I wanna show you. So basically uh, this joint right here held together with some ligaments. You gotta cut through these quickly pull it down push it up and then they come they basically come loose you got to snap it no big deal and then just take your knife and cut through the ligaments front same thing on the i'm sorry back same thing on the front no big deal cut them off uh we're gonna trim this not today because we're just salting today we're gonna trim this right here this is the front shank so this is where lamb shanks come from notice how small this one is uh, compared to the shanks that you buy at the store. Um, so we're gonna trim this shank right here, and then we're gonna tie it to the belly. Uh, that way we get all the salt and fat drippings off of it tomorrow and all the deliciousness. This just basically shortened our lamb by almost a foot. So shortening up the lamb, we have to have a smaller rod. And if we did want to cut the head off, which we're going to keep it because we like the head, but if we cut the lamb off, this thing in totality is about 48, uh, maybe 48 inches, give or take, with, uh, with the head off. Uh, with the head on, it's going to be a little bit longer, and I'm just giving you guys that, some reference. That way you know how much room you're going to need to, like you're not putting this in a Weber barbecue. Sorry, it just isn't going to happen. But uh, you'll, you'll definitely need something a little bit heftier than that for this size of lamb. Okay, so we've salted it. I probably used, I'm going to say, because uh, it was open when I got it, probably about yay much salt. But I mean, we really, really coated this lamb excessively because number one, a lot of this is going to fall off as the lamb starts to sweat this salt is gonna fall off. Uh, but number two, I love my lamb salty. So there you go. Now what else we did, just so you know, you take the knife, you find the fattiest part of the meat here, you push the knife in, and then you turn it, and once the knife is turned, you fill that little gap with salt, turn it back, pull it out, stuff a little more salt in there, you're good to go. But you can see it's, it's well coated, inside put salt in your hand throw it in throw it in and then rub it around and now this is going to go back into the bags and into the fridge uh, till tomorrow morning when we put the rod through it 
and uh, tomorrow morning we'll get the fire rolling once it's all spun up and ready to go. So that's when we will see you. Okay, good morning guys. Here we are. The lamb is all salted. I hung it. We want to try to dry it up just a little bit before the uh, it goes on to the, to the rod. So we're going to slide it onto the rod here and then we're going to tie it in a couple spots. I'll show you how we do that in just a second. Okay guys, we got it all tied up. Just want to point out, we took the, uh, the front shanks off, tied them onto the back. We've got it all secured nicely with four pins. Didn't tie those very good, but you know, it's gonna work. And then we're gonna lay the fire right here because we always want the lamb turning into the fire. And we always want to start the fire very, very small just to warm the meat up. As it goes, then we'll add more and more charcoal. Me too. Ooh, like it? Yeah. All those aldermen fucking hate it. All right, guys, so we're about an hour and a half into it. You can see we're starting to get a little bit of color on the lamb now. We're spreading out the charcoal. You try to keep it up to about right here. That's where you want to keep the, the majority of the heat, right about here. You want to stay off the shoulders for the most part. Very, very little in the middle. And then you really want to kind of pile it on on the back end. The middle is going to cook no matter what. Uh, if you put too much, it's going to get dry and start popping and it makes a mess. And the shoulder right here, once that pops, it's kind of a, a indicator that we're getting cooked. So. We got a lot of heat right here now. We're gonna keep moving it up this way and we'll keep moving it over here. And we should be good. It's uh, about 11 o'clock, started at nine. I figure about another two, two and a half hours, maybe three, and we're good to go. And we also decided to make a little turkey. So let's see how this is coming along. Oh yeah, baby, looking good. All right, guys, we are looking pretty good. I had to put this board on the back of the, uh, the Rajan because it was getting so hot, I'm afraid that brick is gonna spall down the road. So I just threw a sheet of plywood up there holding it in with a shovel, it's fine. And it's getting a little windier too, so. Fire is uh, dying down a little bit. We've gone through about 40 pounds of charcoal. I'm gonna give it a, just keep it now, you know, constant, because now what we're just trying to do is get it to temp. I want the meat to be about 165 degrees. So I'll keep an eye on it, keep it going, add a little more charcoal. We got a second bag and uh, we are good to go. Turkey's been a constant 375. Let's take a peek. Got a double, triple pump so it doesn't burn you. Oh yeah, come on, baby. Look at that. Looking good, looking good. Uh, be prepared when you guys do this, minimum 50 pounds of charcoal. We've, Like I said, we've already gone through 40, but we've already used some on the uh, green egg too. But we will definitely go through 50 pounds because this is a open uh, a Raja. And if we had two sides, three sides and a top, this would be a lot less wasted charcoal and heat. Okay guys, so I uh, just took a temperature reading on the thickest part of the inside of the thigh and uh, it read 165 degrees. So technically the meat is done. Now what I did is I just pushed up some of the charcoal to, uh, to the underside of the lamb to really kind of brown out the skin and uh, give it a little bit of color and uh, we are good to go. Same thing here on the egg. Butterball took the temperature 165 on the inside of the thickest part of the breast Same thing uh, on the other side of the breast. So this is done. I've uh, closed off Whoops now it opened up a little bit, but I closed off the uh, daisy closed off the bottom So that's just staying warm This is done. I'm gonna pour a, uh, a beer on top of it just to get some of the, uh, the ash you can see there's a little bit of ash 
Ow, this is hot. Ooh, during the cooking process. Shoulder perfectly split, just a pinch. That's great. Both knees split. We don't want it to split. If you put the fire on too hot, you're gonna split those shoulders too fast. So now we're pretty much ready to go. We're gonna let it cool for about 20 minutes. Take it off the uh, rod after, uh, after I douse it with a beer. We're gonna let it cool for about 20 minutes and then cut it up. I sharpened up some lobbers and we got a knife and uh, we'll take care of this uh, relatively quick. Okay guys, so the lamb is done. We've now taken it off the heat. We're just gonna let it drip very, uh, just cool off basically. I had it, I took all the charcoal off of it and just let it spin for an extra 15 minutes. So maybe about another 10, 15 minutes and then we'll take it into the, uh, into the garage, poke the ship get out of it and start cutting it. We want the, this is a cool down period. So what's happening now is that fat and the juices are just getting pulled back into the meat and uh, we don't want a dry, nasty lamb. We want a nice, juicy lamb. So this is a critical piece that you got to let it, let it uh, essentially cool off a little bit before we start cutting it. So we're just cutting off the strings now. See, the lamb is not draining anymore. I've got my uh, uh, my lobbers, which I took the grinder to and uh, cleaned them up wash them really good and uh, we're gonna use those to snip the uh, the spine because remember we said excellent meat right here that's the loins we got the two back legs which we could pretty much cut up with a knife and the shoulder pretty much a knife as well lob off the spine here for the head so we're gonna cut it up put it in a tray and uh, and that's it guys, happy Easter. Uh, turkey already went in and it was delicious. What do you think, Johnny, good turkey? Oh my, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Great. Brine it, one cup of salt to one gallon of water, brine it overnight, throw it on the big egg, man, I'll tell you what, you're never gonna have a better turkey. Happy Easter guys, we'll see you soon.